Hello and welcome to Inside Sports. I'm Wes Decker. For the last 10 years now, I've sat in this chair and presented you with the latest news and highlights concerning our Washington County athletes. What's amazing is I've never missed a show for any reason in an entire decade. Wait, what's that? I can, I can hear the sound of something crescendoing. I know you're not booing. You must be chanting, Wes, Wes. And it's that kind of support that's gotten me into this chair to answer the bell every time it sounded. Thank you for that. I bring up this incredible streak I have going, not to pat myself on the back, but because I've wondered on occasion, what would happen if I couldn't make it one week? Well, thanks to the actions of Prayuth Chanocha, the Honorable Prime Minister of Thailand, I feel as though I now have a potential option, just in case. Last week, after briefly speaking to an audience outside Government House in Bangkok, he replaced himself with a life-size cardboard cutout. Before walking off, the Prime Minister declared to those in attendance, if you want to ask any questions on politics or conflict, ask this guy. So reporters were left to hold their remaining questions and do nothing but take pictures of the cardboard cutout. That's what a good entertainer does though, right? Always leave the audience wanting more. However, I'm not so sure that plays as well for the leader of a nation. The optics just aren't good. As for all of you who make up Inside Sports Nation, never fear, I'm present and accounted for and plan to continue to be. And thankfully, I don't have Pittsburgh Steelers defensive back Mike Mitchell predicting my future. I mean, honestly, though, I really wouldn't mind doing the show from Haiti. I understand it's very warm this time of year. Ahead this week, basketball is back in a big way after a week's absence. Herald Mail insiders Bob Parsolitti and Kevin Dunleavy join me for some midseason hot takes relative to our county girls and boys. And I'll start with some red hot wrestlers fresh off their Rebel Duels title this past Saturday. Williamsport Wildcats in the house next. Champions are not merely born, they're forged in the crucible that is flag football. With equal parts turf, pigskin, and heart. That's why Buffalo Wild Wings donates to boys and girls clubs across the country to not only help thousands of kids learn about teamwork on and off the field, but to help them fulfill their destiny. To shred defensive lines, terrorize the secondary, and emerge bonded as true champions. When you're sick or hurt and can't be seen by your regular doctor, you just want to feel better faster. Make a convenient appointment or simply walk into Meritus Urgent Care where you can receive attention from our caring professionals. From sprains and strains to sore throats, earaches, and other ailments that are not life-threatening, Meritus Urgent Care has you covered with on-site labs and x-rays and much more. We're conveniently located on Pennsylvania Avenue in Hagerstown at the Sylvania Center. Feel better faster with Meritus Urgent Care. Welcome back to Inside Sports. We continue with wrestling now, and uh, I've got quite the heaping helping of wrestling today. As a matter of fact, I've got four Williamsport Wildcats here. Janari Carroll, Bryce Palomar, Trent Gross, and Cody Crawford. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having thanks. us. Well, thanks. thanks for being here. Let me start with the guy who's been wrestling for the shortest period of time. And uh, there, there's a story that goes along with that, Janari. Tell me about your recruitment by Coach <laughs> Rektorovic to the wrestling team. All right, um, coming into winter sport, uh, I, uh, during football season, I remember talking to a whole bunch of dudes and the players and stuff about wrestling, well, about my story at North High, how um, Coach Slick wanted me to wrestle so bad, and I told him back then I was a basketball player, and like all the wrestlers and stuff would always follow me and stuff, telling me I should wrestle <laughs> coaches and stuff, like wrestle, 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 and I'm like, I'm a basketball player, I'm a basketball player. I was like, you know, wrestling is not for me. And I remember coming over to Williamsport telling that story and Coach Rec like heard, like heard me say the story and it was like, you want to be stronger, quicker and faster for football. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know, I was, of course, like football is my main sport. He was like, all right, you're wrestling. And I was like, <laughs> um, okay. And then, okay. you know, I was like, all right, I guess I'm wrestling. And then next, like fast forward when football season's over, I like, I remember going to the basketball, like, um, the basketball meeting and stuff. And um, I remember seeing Rec walk by and I'm just like, uh, I'm wrestling. <laughs> so like the next day I go to the wrestling one and I sign my name up. And the next, like a few days later, I have wrestling shoes and a headgear. And I'm like, 
I'm wrestling, so like, <laughs> just been with it ever since, so. Yeah. yeah, you had very little choice, but uh, you're having a good time, aren't you? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I guess it's one of the, it's one of the best choices I made so far. Yeah, I well, mean, again, with, with very little choice on your part. Yeah, but nonetheless, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, great, great addition to the to the Williamsport wrestling yes, team for sure. Yes. Uh, coming off a win at the Rebel Duels, which is something that this Williamsport team does six straight years now that sure. uh, you've won the Rebel Duels, 9-0 and between Friday and Saturday. Bryce, wh what does that mean going forward for this team to go in there to South Hagerstown, win all nine of those bouts, and walk out as champions again? I think it's a good hope for the rest of the season. Maybe we can make it to regionals this year. And, of course, that's something that everybody's looking towards. And, and this, is, this is a solid team. I mean, first of all, you got 10 guys right now with 20 wins or more. So how do you kind of pace yourself as the season goes along? Because everything's important when you're on the mat, but obviously you got those big goals that you're looking at come the end of the season. We want to get a lot of people to regionals this year, hopefully move along to states. Um, comes down to how we practice. And, and Trent, that's one of the things that I hear from a lot of wrestlers is that you're only as good as your practice partner. But this team seems to be a real cohesive unit where everybody really cares about each other. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, with the, um, the coach and you know, they're just pushing each other 24-7 in practice. Like, I practice with Bryce. He pushes me. I push him where it counts. I mean, we're just going hard, doing our drills 24-7. What, you know? was, what was working for you guys so well during the, the Rebel Duels that you were able to just sweep through that? Because there were no matches that were really – Tremendously close. Uh, the one against Boonesboro, 48-30, and that was really the pivotal match and all of that. But nonetheless, I mean, you, you guys were just on fire. It's our, I believe, to me, I believe it's our endurance and conditioning because we know it's all we do is conditioning and, you know, the hard drills we do for like two minutes, and we're just going hard that entire two minutes, not stopping or anything. We just keep going. And that, to me, that's why we're on fire at the time. Cody, what, what's it mean to you to walk out of the Rebel Duels as most outstanding lightweight wrestler? Does that mean anything to you? Um, doing it two years in a row now, I really think that my game has improved and um, being able to go in there and not know both times and seeing these good kids is just preparing prepare me for states and all and um, hopefully senior year go out with a bang. Now you have over 100 wins in your career. Is that some place that you wanted to get before all was said and done? Obviously, there are a lot of team goals here with <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah. but, but, but individually, when you began your career, was that something that you were striving for? Uh, definitely the milestone of my career was 100, and uh, now I'm actually going for the school record all time is 139. So i got a few more matches to go, and hopefully I can conquer that by the end of the year. What, what's it going to take for you to accomplish the rest of those goals that you'd like to have? Obviously, the biggest one out there is the potential for a state championship. Yeah. Um, it's going to keep taking work and, you know, dieting and running and keeping your weight under control and keep practicing and keep grinding. And I think by the end of the year, as a team, we can do it, and as an individual, a couple of us can do it as well. And Janari, that's one of those things that you wouldn't have to do if you were playing basketball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. How, how tough is that uh, now that you're wrestling at 220 versus last year? You had some leeway. Yeah. And we talked about this a little bit at 285. I mean, it's been it's been tough. Um, I remember last year, as all these dudes here would practically almost starve themselves and just try <laughs> to make weight. I'm sitting there eating, having candy and stuff. Like I got 50 pounds of spare, but. Um, you know, wrestling 220 now, it's just like, I'm like borderline, like I'm almost there, I'm there. So it's just like, you know, just trying to be on top of things and just, it's just maintaining it by myself. Cause like Coach Rick always tells us, he always tells me, you know, like controlling your weight and stuff, that's all on me. So it's just, as long as I can do it, you know, it's possible, so. It, there's a lot of personal responsibility that goes mm -hmm. along with this, and then it transfers over to those team goals that we've talked about. And, and, and Bryce, I asked Cody about being in that century club. Uh, you're one of just 48 guys in the county to ever get to 100 wins. What's that mean for you? Um, honestly, it just means I need to get better wins than that because I want to get further. If, if I can get that, I should be able to make it in states and place high in states, I believe. And this being your senior year, do you create any extra pressure for yourself because this is the final opportunity? Yeah, it's the last shot. I mean, after this, there's not really anything left. Trent, at the Rebel Duels, uh, you had 
pretty successful time there. What, what are some of the things that you walk out of there, though, saying, I need to do better going forward? Oh, when I wrestle them tall, lanky kids, I need to, you know, prepare myself <laughs> more for, for, uh, for them, you know. It's more different. It's like wrestling a different style when you're wrestling. You, I can't go out there and, like, you know, try to shoot a takedown right away because it's never going to work for me. I just got to, you know, just try to play it smarter and be more technical when I'm out there with them. Can't be physical when, like, a bull out there. Never works. <laughs> never you, works. You, you, you can't be a bull against the tall, lanky kids. I no. love it. Uh, no. Cody, as far as uh, your concern, obviously, uh, right now, you're pretty much wrestling at the top of your game. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty fair to say. Never want to peak too early, but you always want to keep moving forward. Uh, the county meet isn't too far away. No. Uh, we don't need to do a preview of that right now <laughs> because that's still about a month out. Yep. But uh, North Hagerstown has won the last four in a row. Williamsport right now 24-2 and two in duels so far this season. Uh, I don't want to create any bulletin board no. material for anybody. I know Coach Reck doesn't want that either. Yep. But you know, how do you feel about this team as a whole and potentially bringing that Clyde Downs trophy back to Williamsport this season? Uh, to speak for the team, we're going to bring that trophy home this year. All right. Well, we're going to bring I, that home, and there, I think as a team, we're going to do good, and individually, we're going to have a lot of good county champions. No yep. greater confidence than that. Yes, uh, guys, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, you very you. much. Yep. Thank you. I'll be back right after this. Uh, girls basketball up next. Bob Parcelitti joins me for that in just a moment. At Hamilton Nissan, we know you've got places to go, so let's travel together. The Nissan Rogue, plenty of room for you, and plenty of room for him. With nearly 40 cubic feet of cargo space, everyone will be using the Rogue for everything, all the time. And on occasion, you'll find an evening for yourselves, and the Nissan Rogue will be right there with you. Hamilton Nissan, let's travel together. Come see us on the dual highway. At home, amid protests, questions were asked. As the Vietnam debate raged, for those who fought, from all walks of life, we went where our country told us to go. And sometimes we had to say goodbye to friends. The Joint Veterans Council of Washington County asked you to join with them and exercise the freedom of choice Vietnam vets helped ensure to honor their service and sacrifice with a monument in their honor. Freedom is not free. Donate today to the Vietnam War Veterans Monument. Welcome back to Inside Sports and time to bring basketball back on the show. We didn't have any last week, so uh, we've got a couple of uh, longer segments for you this week. And we start with girls basketball and Herald Mail insider Bob Parcelitti. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Let's start with the St. James Lady Saints who have been playing excellent basketball of late. Uh, it's interesting to me because they come back off a long break which is something that can happen with St. James with the holiday break, a lot of kids going back home, and then they come back 12 days off. They had played excellent defense the two games before and had recorded wins. Uh, the first game back, they allowed just 17 points, and then they go and they play St. Maria Goretti on Friday night, uh, a matchup that has not been kind to St. James historically. They had lost the last six heading into that one. St. James gets a little bit of a break because Goretti doesn't have its full lineup. But once again, Bob, I, I have to point to the defense that St. James has been playing. They only allowed 42 points in that game, and they win it by 14, leading from start to finish. There was only one tie in the entire game. But right now, I think St. James is really starting to click with these young players starting to find their roles, and they, they look like a very cohesive basketball team. Well, we've seen it in the NFL playoffs so far, and we see it uh, week to week with Williamsport defense wins. And, uh, you know, after a long break and you come back, your offense could be out of sync. But if you play defense, that's the one thing you can control. You defend and you have rebounds and then you have many chances to do things. And, you know, if that's the case, they lost uh, any of that offensive flow because of the 12 days off. Defense can get a lot of cure a lot of ills. <laughs> it's kind of like the beginning of the baseball season. Uh, are the pitchers ahead of the hitters is the question. And we're about midway through this season right now. That's five straight wins for St. James after what I think is a pretty big win on Monday night at Ford Hill. And again, allowing less than 40 points there. 53-39 was the victory. Well, and that, that Ford Hill came down here and won that uh, Clear Spring tournament. Uh, they beat Goretti to do it. So, I mean, 
they're a good team, but I, I thought they were beatable. I thought if everybody was there, that Goretti would have handled them. And now you got St. James going up there with their full complement of players, the ones that play well, their, their starting lineup intact, and they handled them. Yeah, Skyler Treadwell averaging uh, almost 19 points per game during this five-game winning streak. And Morgan McMahon, you talk about a player who has improved as the season has gone along, the freshman. Uh, she just continues to be a viable option offensively for them. Uh, St. James uh, will have another tough task coming up on Saturday. They'll play in the uh, private versus public school challenge down in Baltimore against McDonough. Uh, another uh, private school team that is playing very well right now is Heritage Academy and their star, Michaela Hoy, just a junior. Hard to believe she is on the brink of a thousand points already. Yeah. Uh, she's like the do everything. She's, uh, I mean, not, not trying to make a comparison in any way other than the ability to do a lot. Mm -hmm. She's like Michael Jordan used to be in the NBA. I mean, he assists, score, play defense, get steals, make the play you need to get things going. And you know, if you look at, at Heritage, they're doing a lot, and they're not all there yet. Uh, with the graduation of uh, Chloe Prejean, they lost their main rebounder, and they don't really have anybody that's taking over on the rebounding to the extent that she did to really help kick out the, the fast, faster-paced game. So with that being said, Hoy is very important because – Kind of like another football analogy, but the short court. If you get the steal, you only have to go the short court. You beat the defense down, and, and you score. Right. And that seems to be when they do well. Uh, and that's when she's out in the open floor and either creating or scoring. And, you know, I mean, she was 37 points short of getting to her 1,000 as of Thursday, last Thursday night, and she scored 35 of them on Friday. So, I mean, that says a lot right there. Speaking of points, Heritage just five points short of being undefeated right now. They're nine and two with a couple of very close defeats. Uh, Williamsport started the week uh, nine and three, averaging 41.4 points per game offensively. Wait a minute, that means they have to be playing great defense. Yeah, they're only allowing 34 points per game on the defensive end. And since the 2014 15 season, the Wildcats are now 52 and one when holding opponents to 39 points or fewer, but 17 and 15 when giving up 41 or more. I mean, that is a razor-thin margin right there. Well, I, I would, when you were talking about that, I, I would look the other day at their scoring, or, you know, the game scores, and they've only had one game that they've won that the opponent has scored over 40 points. Now, in the games they lost, which is three, I think, right now, mm -hmm. uh, they've given up a lot. So when they get in there and they get to play in their defense and they get to play their game, they're pretty formidable. And, you know, the thing about it is it's sort of the, uh, you know, trying to put the battle of wills in there. You know, I mean, they have to do everything they can to keep it from being very, very fast-paced because they don't, they're not equipped for that, and they, they've been winning that battle. Yeah, while their next three games are against Frederick County opponents, they now have a 37-game winning streak against Washington County public school teams. Now, the team that almost put an end to that streak earlier this season was Clear Spring. Back in December, Clear Spring coming off a bit of an eye-opening win, I would say, this past Friday against Boonesboro, although it's only the third game that Clear Springs played at home all year. The other two were in their tournament, so are we thinking that maybe Clear Spring has turned the corner a little bit here with that win over Boonesboro? Well, the surprising thing to me with Clear Spring is last year they were a team that they scored 30 points. You know, I mean, no matter what they did, no, you know, they wouldn't score. There were a couple of games I had seen where they were putting the ball up on the glass, but it was just coming off the glass. And, uh, you know, they didn't have anybody in double figures scoring or anything like that. This year, uh, I've only seen them a couple of times, but th this year, the thing that strikes me is that they are able to uh, score quickly if they have to. Uh, they play the game they played against Goretti, even though they lost, they gave Goretti fits because they were shooting without, I mean, the, the tendency is to dribble to get your shot. They were taking the shot and shooting. They were doing everything before Goretti came over to defend them. And that changes the complexion. It speeds the game up. So they're able to do a scoring, you know. I think, I, I think it's a real thin edge for them, but they're able to get out and score points. 
Yeah, they're five and seven right now with their next games against Smithsburg and then against Hancock. And I wanted to mention a couple of players from Hancock here because I was thoroughly impressed when I saw them earlier this season in uh, Sarah Kearns, who's a junior, Chloe Stotler, who is a sophomore. Those two girls can shoot. And I think they're kind of getting lost in the jumble of basketball within the county because they play at Hancock, but I think they're certainly worthy of mention. And then uh, I wanted to also uh, throw out a shout out to, to Peyton Kirshner at St. Maria Goretti. We talked about the injuries. Uh, Camille Zanayich also injured this past Friday in the game against St. James. Don't know her status right now, but uh, Kirshner scored 92 points in the last four games. That's 23 points per game. And that's a freshman. Uh, she didn't have her best game against St. James, but in the second half she scored 11, which was still a team high. So just uh, some odds and ends and uh, lots of different takes on things here as, again, we're at about the midway point of the season. Bob, thanks so much for being here this week. Thanks for having me on. I'll be back right after this. So uh, we'll delve into boys basketball a little bit. Kevin Dunleavy's here to do that with me in just a moment. Antietam Broadband's Flight Gigabit service is ultra-high-speed internet delivered by a direct fiber connection. We are one of the few communities in the country to have it. But what does it mean? It means businesses will want to move here, which means more jobs, better jobs. It means access to world-class infrastructure for healthcare, education, and nonprofits. It means enhanced social and economic well-being. That's why it won the 2017 Leading Edge Award from the Chamber of Commerce. Flight Gigabit from Antietam Broadband, changing how people connect. Welcome back to Inside Sports. We continue now with boys basketball. And joining me is Herald Mail Insider Kevin Dunleavy. Welcome back to the show, Kevin. Thanks, Wes. Well, we're just about at the midway point of the season right now, probably as close as we'll get as it relates to the show. So I, I wanted to look at some things that have transpired so far and maybe look ahead at some things as the season continues to unfold. I wanted to go back to last Tuesday, first of all, because I find this to be an incredible statistic. I saw uh, Tim Kelby at the North Hagerstown Clear Spring Boys game. And he said, this is the 46th all-time meeting and coming into tonight, North has only lost one time in the history of this series against Clear Spring, and then North jumps on Clear Spring early, gets out to a big lead, and that turns out to be the difference in the game. So it's just business as usual. And uh, North Hagerstown at that point in time anyway was really on a roll. And uh, this is a team still that seems like it has a lot of pieces to it where they just need to fine-tune things perhaps a little bit as the season goes along. But I think they're going to give teams some problems. Yeah, they, uh, they won five straight until they lost to Williamsport, and they looked great for three quarters against Williamsport and, uh, and then just kind of faded. They've got, uh, uh, they've got a lot of pieces and a lot of length and quickness. And, you know, you can see the elements. The experience is not, is level is not that great. But... Uh, you can really see them coming, and I, I expect, expect by playoff time they could really be dangerous. And I think when you talk North Hagerstown and Williamsport, that's another series, at least recently, where it's been so one-sided. For Williamsport, that was the ninth straight victory over North Hagerstown. So again, it's almost a given that it was going to play out that way. But Williamsport has been incredible in the county. I think uh, Coach Grable has uh, put a yeah. premium on winning in his own backyard, but it's outside of Washington County where the trouble has crept up. And you referenced it in your notebook this week about having to beat those teams from Frederick County, especially those teams they're going to see coming up in their classification in the playoffs. Yeah, Ryan said this week that uh, they've got to keep games low scoring, so they've got to control the pace. They've got to play really good defense and, you know, make it, possession per possession game and uh, you know, they're they can still get up and down the floor pretty good because they've all their guys that they put on the floor are pretty agile um, but really they, they, if they lack one thing it's it's quickness and you know if they get into a game where it's up and down and uh, and I imagine Oakdale was that way because Oakdale scored 77 points against them um, you know that would that doesn't bode well for for their style of play when it comes to scoring points Clear Spring 
has had no trouble scoring points in particular this season in the games that they've won. Yeah. Uh, their margin of victory in their seven wins, almost 33 points per game. Then you look at the other side of that, in their three losses, they've lost those games by an average of almost 13 points per game. What's the real clear spring? Yeah, they're a mystery to me. It's, it's almost like they have not, when they get a, a comfort level, then they can just be themselves. But when they get into a tough situation, they, they, they don't maximize who they are and they kind of lose sight of what they do best. Um, they're, not, they're not maxing out like they have the last two years. I think they've gotten the most out of their talent the last two years. And, uh, and that hasn't happened this year. And I still think they, they got a real good shot to get it together and be a good playoff team. They're in a region that they could easily win, which would you know put a nice finish on the season regardless of what happens during the regular season. Well, they certainly have something that you can't teach, and we talked about that in the preview, yeah. the height and the length that they possess, but it just seemingly hasn't all come together at this point. However, Jarrett Lozich has been sensational, yeah. uh, you know, scoring the basketball. Yeah, he's a player of the year candidate, the way he's playing, he's leading. He's a tough kid, you know, I mean, he does everything for you. It's just whether or not he can pull the other guys along with him, I think. Uh, the, some of the other guys just aren't having the kind of progression that you would expect, you know, um, from their careers. Uh, you know, you expected Mike Myers and Connor Michael to, you know, to take that next step, and, and that hasn't really happened. Uh, Tavon Davis has been a really good addition for him, uh, but it's almost like they're still trying to find out who they are. Yeah, because they haven't had guys like step up game in and game out and really lead the way. And you almost yeah. expected that to happen with that core group because they all have the potential to do that. And that just hasn't happened to this point. But as you said, plenty more basketball to be played. And in that particular region, I think they're still in very good shape there. You, you mentioned player of the year candidates. And I want to talk about a couple of guys who have been unheralded so far this year and probably won't wind up getting that title. But one in particular uh, on the public school landscape, uh, Hancock senior forward Garrett Golden, who's been asked to do everything there. And despite all of his efforts, and they've been tremendous, uh, over 16 points per game, which is fifth in the county overall, 5.1 rebounds per game, which is seventh among public school players. They still don't have a win. I know he'd trade all of those stats for a win, but he has done everything he's been asked to do. It just hasn't been enough because the surrounding cast just hasn't been able to come through. And then as far as private school players, over at uh, Broad Fording Christian, now, there's a team that's clicking, 14-3 and three right now. And uh, the biggest guy on the team is a guy that when I watch them play, I can't take my eyes off of him because he's, he's got his hands in everything. His fingerprints are on everything. Uh, Turbob Benito, 16.4 points per game, third best in the county, leads the county in uh, rebounding average and blocks per game average. I mean, th th this guy has been an incredible player for a team that – has been able to get out there and compete with just about everybody they've played. And sometimes that's not the case for Broad Fording, but so far this year is so good. Yeah, they're, the MD, MDCC is, is, is down this year, uh, and there's a lot of mat, mismatches. They're averaging their, their wins are by 43 points per game. I mean, uh, th That's almost unheard of. Yeah, and, and there's not many big, good big men in the league. Uh, when he's had good matchups against good quality teams, he's played well. So, you know, that's, that goes in his favor. But uh, his coach said there's times that, you know, they've had to get on him to really focus on, you got to be me, you, got, you know, you got to, you got to, because he almost feels sorry for the other teams sometimes. Uh, but he is having a great year and he's really advanced in one season. Yeah, and that's kind of where we are here at the, the midway point of the season. Uh, just a, a few hot takes we're throwing out uh, this week. And we can use everything hot because it's just been horribly, horribly cold. But uh, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, out in the gyms and uh, all around the county coming up. Kevin, as always, thanks for being here. Thank you, Wes. I, I should tell you that next week, the premiere of Inside Sports, that is Thursday at 8 o'clock, will be preempted by live basketball. It'll be our first boys game of the season as Antietam Media Services takes you to Williamsport as the aforementioned Wildcats will host the aforementioned Clear Spring Blazers. And the Blazers come into that one uh, looking to avenge a December loss at the hands of Williamsport. And then stay tuned because after that, as per usual on a Thursday at 11 o'clock, Inside Sports will air. So we'll debut the new episode, which we'll see 
indoor track and field step into the spotlight. County champions uh, to talk about, uh, pictures, descriptions, and accounts thereof, and much more. That is next time. Thanks for watching this time, and I'll see you then on the inside.